You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. With Tony Stark gone, it could be time for Spider-Man to encounter foes who truly hate him instead of his late mentor. Hey, it's a superhero rite of passage. There have been plenty of hints about the Sinister Six, and I have an idea about who might be getting the team together. For a long time, the infamous crew of Spider-Man villains known as the Sinister Six were seemingly stuck in Sony's pile of movies that'll never actually get made. There was supposed to be a Sinister Six movie which would have been a spin-off of their Amazing Spider-Man series, but alas, it never materialized. Rhino, Vulture, Dr. Octopus, Mysterio, and Kraven the Hunter were all teased as members with the Green Goblin operating as their leader. Then, Sony wanted to switch things up to a more comic book loyal interpretation and decided to add Sandman to the lineup and make Doc Ock the one in charge. But all of that just got my hopes up for nothing since Spider-Man swung on over to the MCU leaving his enemies behind. Not that I don't think the MCU is the best place for him at the moment. Well, I'm ready to get my hopes crushed again, so I've been getting excited about all the clues that we could be seeing the Sinister Six in the MCU as soon as the upcoming Spider-Man movie in Phase 4. In the much smaller pile of Sony's comic projects that end up happening is Morbius the Living Vampire, and the trailer provided some tantalizing hints about the Sinister Six, and a possible connection to the MCU. There's a piece of graffiti visible on the wall behind Jared Leto's Morbius which shows an image of Spider-Man and the word murderer. Although I disagree with that description of my favorite web slinger, it's an exciting clue nonetheless. Then there's the fact that Michael Keaton has been cast in the film and appears in the trailer in an undisclosed role. Keaton is also a member of the MCU, where he portrays Adrian Toomes, better known as the Vulture, who is one of the founding members of the Sinister Six in the comic books. As further evidence of a Sinister Six movie, there was a leaked email from Sony exec Amy Pascal. It revealed that they were working on a Spider-Man movie starring Tom Holland and taking place in the MCU. Although things were dicey for a while, Sony and Disney have agreed to share custody of Tom Holland for now, making this film a real possibility for the near future. Morbius may be a living vampire who's fought against Spidey in the comics, but he's not an inherent villain. He seems like an unlikely candidate for the Sinister Six, but the Vulture is a much better one. However, there's someone else I can more easily see leading the team, and it's someone we haven't had the chance to see in the MCU yet. Yes, I'm talking about Dr. Otto Octavius, better known as Dr. Octopus. Spider-Man has a massive rogues gallery, but we've yet to see some of his most iconic foes like Doc Ock or the Green Goblin in the MCU. Yet. Dr. Octopus is going to be a big feature in the new Web Slinger attraction on Avengers Campus in Disneyland. It'll show Spider-Man battling this famous foe, which helped kick off speculation that he'll soon be introduced to the MCU. In the comic books, Dr. Octopus was the one who got the Sinister Six started when he decided to take advantage of strength in numbers to bring down Spider-Man. Well, it was a good idea in theory, but their execution left a lot to be desired. Unfortunately, finding a bunch of people who hate the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man isn't that easy. And villains aren't exactly known for their ability to get along well with others. Doc Ock learned the hard way that organizing a group isn't easy. Maybe he should have printed out some more flyers. That's a mistake that Korg is all too familiar with. But Doc Ock did end up putting together a team, including Electro, Kraven the Hunter, Mysterio, Sandman, and Vulture. They kidnapped Peter Parker's Aunt May and Daily Bugle secretary Betty Brant and held them hostage in order to get Spider-Man to appear. The good news is that he did show up, but unfortunately for the alliteration-loving Sinister Six, he took them out one by one. Doc Ock really should have spent more time on team-building exercises. And this isn't the only Spider-Man story in which Doc Ock got the team together. In the popular PS4 Spider-Man game, he puts together a group consisting of Electro, Rhino, Scorpion, Vulture, and Mr. Negative. Although he originally wanted to get revenge on Norman Osborn, Spider-Man ends up getting in the way, as he so often does. Fans have been predicting that Norman Osborn will be the next big Spider-Man villain, and it's not a bad theory. He's a major foe, a compelling character, and his company Oscorp could fill the void of power left by Tony Stark. But if we're going to be packing six villains together in a movie, we need to save at least some screen time for Spider-Man. Sony's Spider-Man 3 suffered because of its overabundance of evildoers, while Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was great, even though it was packed full of spider characters. I'm not a math expert, but a quick look at the evidence shows more Spider-Man equals more success. Presenting Dr. Octopus as a disgruntled scientist would be a far simpler introduction, allowing for more time to be spent on other characters and, of course, our beloved Peter Parker. Listen, we don't want to see the same mistakes from the last Spider-Man film haunt this one, especially when we know Tom Holland has such sweet dance moves. 
Otto Octavius is a classic Spider-Man villain, but he's also a brilliant scientist. In the comic books, the whole reason he invented his multi-arm getup was to be able to safely interact with radioactive materials. It's possible this could even be a connection with the way Peter Parker gained his superpowers in the first place. In Spider-Man Homecoming, we heard him briefly confide in his friend Ned that he was bitten by a spider, but we don't know where the fateful irradiated arachnid originated from. This would be a cool detail to link the two characters, and frankly, par for the course considering Doc Ock's history of unfortunate mistakes. Creating his very own greatest enemy is definitely the kind of thing that would happen to him. Dr. Octopus could easily be introduced into the MCU as a scientist who experienced a serious lab accident and runs afoul of Spider-Man. And as for the rest of the Sinister Six, well, many of them are in the MCU already. The team has gone through a lot of membership changes over the years, so it's unlikely that the initial lineup will be exactly the way it was in the comic books. We've seen Matt Gargan, The Scorpion, Herman Schultz, The Shocker, and if he's alive, Quentin Beck would be a solid candidate. Although he definitely wasn't looking so good when we saw him for the last time in Far From Home. There's also the option of switching things up and adding Phineas Mason, the tinkerer from Homecoming. He, The Scorpion, and Vulture are all connected, and have already been introduced into the MCU, so they seem like a solid selection for the starting lineup. There's also an interesting aspect of the PS4 Sinister Six storyline that would be an amazing addition to the MCU. Spider-Man was searching for the Devil's Breath antidote when he got into an altercation with Doc Ock. Not only did the villain manage to escape with the antidote, but an innocent bystander ended up getting bitten by a spider that had been genetically modified by Oscorp. That innocent bystander? None other than Miles Morales. Kevin Feige has confirmed that Miles Morales exists in some form in the MCU, and we met his uncle Aaron Davis back in Spider-Man Homecoming. In the comics, Miles succeeds Peter Parker as Spider-Man after he passes away, but hopefully the Marvel multiverse will be big enough to accommodate both heroes. As much as I'd love to see Miles Morales in the MCU, it would be tragic if it cost us Peter Parker. That Spider-Man graffiti from the Morbius trailer does resemble the PS4 version of the hero, so this could be a hint that the MCU version of the Sinister Six will be influenced by the video game version. Not only would this give Peter a whole slew of interesting enemies to battle against, but it could also set the scene for the introduction of Miles Morales as Spider-Man. I'm more of a comic book guy, but in the world of sports, I believe that's what is called a home run. And there's another reason I think now would be the perfect time for the Sinister Six to make their appearance in the MCU, and it all has to do with Tony Stark. We all know that Tony had a hand in shaping the MCU as it exists today, for better or for worse. Yes, he created Ultron, which cost us Quicksilver and a whole bunch of collateral damage, but we'll call it all even considering his heroic sacrifice during Avengers Endgame. During his time in the MCU, he made a lot of enemies, including members of his own team sometimes. But despite all of the mistakes he made, he remained a hero to many people, including his protege Peter Parker, who also saw him as a father figure. Even though Tony lost his life during Endgame, Peter Parker is still fighting his battles. During Homecoming, he had to battle against the Vulture and his allies, but the only reason Adrian Toomes resorted to a life of crime in the first place was because Tony Stark took over the cleanup of the Battle of New York. While money doesn't mean much to Tony since he had so much of it, it means a lot to Adrian, who has a family to support. So he became the Vulture, and Peter Parker ended up having to be the one to stop him, despite Iron Man making things more difficult for him. Then in Far From Home, Peter had to fight against Quentin Beck and a whole host of disgruntled Stark Industries employees who weren't the biggest fans of his former mentor. And in Quentin's defense, Tony did call his amazing new technology barf. Obviously, Mysterio and his allies caused a ton of trouble for Peter, culminating in his secret identity being revealed. Even the Edith Tony left behind for Peter ended up nearly destroying a bus full of his classmates. Peter isn't the kind of guy to hold a grudge. He even rescued the Vulture after fighting against him for all of Homecoming. But that doesn't mean that he needs to spend the rest of his superhero career cleaning up after the messes Tony left behind. He needs to be able to stand on his own and fight against villains that aren't connected to the late great Tony Stark. So far, we've seen him fight enemies with grudges against Iron Man, but Peter needs to encounter someone who really knows and understands him, and wants to take him out so that they can commit crimes without being stopped. Dr. Octopus hates Peter Parker so much that when he took over his body, he became the superior Spider-Man, just to try to prove that Peter wasn't really so great. He eventually admits that maybe Peter was better at saving the day, but still, there's no love lost between these two characters. There are some villains, like the Mad Titan Thanos, that just want to cause large-scale destruction, and don't have a grudge against particular heroes. But there's just something special about a villain that has a specific grudge against the hero fighting them. 
Just look at some of the most popular villains in the MCU, like Eric Killmonger, who had personal issues with his cousin T'Challa. And then there's always Loki and Thor and their infamous love-hate relationship. What Peter Parker needs in order to be his own hero and not just Tony's successor is a villain that hates him enough to form up a whole squad determined to take him down. He's already earned the ire of Matt Gargan back in Homecoming, and there's just something oh so special about the first time a villain swears to get revenge on a hero whose only crime was saving the day. Dr. Octopus is one of Spider-Man's greatest foes with a serious grudge and the abilities to back up his rage. And to bring down Peter Parker, he just might need to put a team together. Introducing the Sinister Six is risky, but Disney will make it work. Are you hoping Doc Ock heads up a squad of evildoers, or do you think it's just too many villains? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and click subscribe for more from CBR. Bye for now!